<laughs> we are live from Austin, Texas with R.E.M. and Inside Look and Excited. Please welcome Live R.E.M. Everybody here. Just a reason for city limits right <laughs> the, the studio where so many interesting people have come through and you've been here for most of it or all of it all of it very i've been here since the beginning i was here for the pilot when willie nelson did the first show i was like the a three or four i was way down the list i think they let me move the master fader and that was it back then but it was a lot of fun so who are you i'm david huff and i'm the audio director for the austin city limits and this is my going on my 34th season and you're also an audio engineer, right? Right. I'm an audio engineer. I graduated at UT uh, with a double E degree back in 1972. Tell me about what you do. Because you're, you're here in the sound room, right? Well, yeah. What we've got is a sound stage out here with a, with a band playing uh, for a live audience. And uh, there's microphones that are split into three consoles. And this is the recording console back here in the soundproof room. And uh, we collect up to the 48 microphones out there and record it off into the uh, hard drives now. So we're not analog anymore. It's all converted to digital right here with a euphonics and going into the new window that's uh, running under that uh, AMD box. And we just listened to REM and you were back here recording, right? Tell me a little bit about your show because a lot of my readers might not have heard, seen it or whatnot. Well, Austin City Limits is a television program on PBS and in the United States. In the United States, yeah. and uh, we have a worldwide audience. So. Now, now bands are are on tour. They're on the road in their semis and all that. And normally they go into a nightclub or a big hall and they set up and they they play. So that's what we've got set up here, except. We have cameras and audio and, and tape machines to record all this. I just said tape machine, and we, don't, we don't have, haven't used a tape in about five years. I, I keep telling people <laughs> I, I'm recording on tape, and uh, we're using all hard drives, too, for our media. The only tape we have is the uh, LTO over there. <laughs> but it's great. Uh, so the bands, are they feel right at home because they just do what they normally do when they play any, any, any show on their tour. And uh, we even black out the cue lights on the cameras so they're not they don't know which cameras turned on so they're just ignoring the cameras and playing to the crowd and the crowd responds to the band and the crowd is it's a very intimate setup and they're right up on the edge of the stage is five feet away oh, yeah. and tonight they're closer than that they were standing up right next to it so the band is like wow they're right there and they feel that energy and it just builds up to this amazing kind of a feedback loop going on here now how do we get tickets to see a, a show here well in a couple of years, we're going to be in a new venue downtown. It's going to have like 2,000 seats, and that shouldn't be any problem. Right now, we're in a space off on the UT campus with only one exit, and the fire marshal has a sort of cut back to 300 people here now. So tickets are hard to get by. Tonight, it was just a fan club. Didn't Gibson Guitar Company make a, a few guitars from a piece of the stage? The very original stage, the first year or two when we did our pilots, and then I think we upgraded the stage like the third year and the original stage after all these 30 years it was dry enough that I, they could make a guitar out of it. Tell me about some of the people you've uh, recorded back here. Oh, Chet Atkins. Um, um, now, now, that, now the mind goes blank here. Let's see, we've got well the, the first season were mostly Austin bands like Marshall Ball and, and uh, Asleep at the Wheel and and the Texas Playboys, and then and then, you know we did we would do some shows with Willie Nelson, and uh, as the years went on, we were able to draw bigger acts, and and uh, we ended up doing Coldplay just a couple of seasons ago, and that was like a highlight. And Leonard Cohen came in, and he had some Austin musicians in his band that played. That was 
the most unusual taping we've ever done. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we started off doing more country and western, and then we got into more of the, now we're kind of evolved into the, you know, what the kids are listening to these days. <laughs> Sounded like my dad. <laughs> I knew this would happen. <laughs> Tell me about this soundboard and, and your workspace because, you know, I, I ran a soundboard in high school, but it only had like three of these sliders. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and this thing's bigger in the rack, I mean, in the electronics. I mean, this is just a control surface. And each one of these buckets, you know, is, has an Ethernet plug and a power plug, and that's it. And it's all hubbed together and, and interacted. So this, this is actually a controller for the computer. And uh, the computer manages all of the conversions from the microphones through the analog to the digital. And uh, from that point on, it's, it's all this DSP stuff going off and racks and racks of gear back here. You guys are recording 5.1 surround sound, right? Five channels of surround sound. Yeah, we, we start off recording discreetly all 48 tracks plus the audience array. And then we mix that down as a 5.1. And um, from that, we also derive a, a ProLogic 2 stereo which is like digital stereo, or digital, Dolby Digital, that's the term. And then that's broadcast in both of those formats and the new uh, HD t TV, it, you know, the high definition television, whether it's terrestrial or over the satellite or cable, is all gonna have the 5.1 embedded as, as a, like an AC3 stream or something. So it'll be like going to the store, buying a DVD, except you can get it for free off the air. So I noticed that uh, one one slider actually controlled a group, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I had one here that was just sliding the hole. Oh, yeah, you see it. <laughs> I think that was for the last radio interview we did, and I just put all the vocal mics together. Oh, well, that's that's my audience. Oh. Yeah, I have seven mics for the audience out there, and I've got those panned around for the full surround. It's, you know, sometimes I just listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the secret to good audio? Uh, patience. Really, and a good room. That's good. our big secret, is that we've got a great acoustics out there. Yeah. Not, not expensive microphones? Not really. Actually, all our mics are, are sure mics that were, you know, like, here, kid, <laughs> try these out. and <laughs> Just give us credit. You know, there's like we got a box full of free sure mics, you know, on, 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 on consignment. So, and now, actually, those mics are the ones that are best for reducing feedback because you know we've got monitor wedges and PA speakers that are cranked loud so a good microphone and a room that doesn't reflect it back to make the feedback problem so we get great sounds out there just with that. Yeah. Now I noticed you have some uh, sound absorbing materials on the walls here. Yeah. Why do you do that? Uh, well this room uh, we still is sort of it's, it has more of a, a lived-in kind of thing. This this room has never been treated by an, a, 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 an acoustical consultant because there was never a budget for that since we're PBS. So this is just sort of stuff that was donated and thrown together, and, and it works. You know, when you know when you're in a room lo as long as I have, you, you you adjust to the character of the room, and it's not that bad a room. Now, I, Rocky's going to have a real problem seeing this, but what are some of these these displays show a curve on them? Of some kind. What what are they telling you? Well, now this console, you know, you have a microphone out there. You add gain to it. Uh, when you start blending your balances together to get the final mix, then you then you need to treat, you know, like uh, automatic gain and compression and limiting. And then there's um, there, are, there are tone controls to you know for treble and bass and all of these curves kind of represent what's going on there. And then we sp you know put a little reverb on some of the things and and uh, schmooze it out. Is there anything you do for a singer who's not quite really good, you know? Not as much. Like Britney Spears or well, something? Yeah. you know. In a, Can you sweeten her voice a little bit? We can't do that too much because we've got the live PA and the monitors and all that. I mean, we're documenting a live performance here. Unlike what, you know, say Britney or whoever is in a studio where there are isolated rooms and the piano's locked in this room. and and it's soundproofed and, and then a singer who can't sing, you know, they, they can pitch shift it and auto-tune it. Now we can't really do any auto-tune here because you, and it ends up doing this flanging effect because there's leakage coming from all the PA and monitors that's not tuned and, and it's not tunable. So if they can't sing, you know, then that's, it comes through. It comes through. You get the real performance. <laughs> yeah, so the folks at home, this is the truth. <laughs> so, uh, this is where it gets all recorded, right? This is the computer that AMD 
put together for us with a dual Opteron. Yeah, and Scott's uh, the guy who got us in here. He, yeah. he, he, you work with uh, music studios and movie studios. You, you got me into the uh, Austin Film Society thing last year. Da David thinks he has the best job in the country, but I got the best job at AMD, which, you know, I get to hang out with guys like him and do this kind of music thing, which is, you know, I, I you know shh, don't tell, you know, don't tell my folks back there because they'll want to. Uh, yeah, yeah. We won't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody will see this they'll video. Never, they'll never know. <laughs> Nobody will pass this video around the office. All right. Well, I mean, you know, as David pointed out, it's a live performance, right? And you cannot, you know, from the engineering room saying, hey, guys, um, that was great. Can you do it again? The computer crashed. And give me five minutes because i got to reboot it. You know, it's just not acceptable. And uh, we saw when Optron came out, we started, you know, sh showing its capabilities that, that it literally solved every problem audio engineers were having. It wouldn't crash on them. They could do as much as they wanted as far as track count and effects and all that kind of stuff. And the sonic quality was fantastic. And, uh, you know, you don't take it from me, you know, guys like David. Sounds Field. great. Awesome. Yeah. What was it like before you got this? Thing? Well, before this, it was like analog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Tapes? Tapes, yeah. You know, I had noise reduction or hiss or whatever. And the sticky shed syndrome. What's that? Oh my gosh. The audio tapes in the 80s had a chemical, it was one of those little bugs, except it was a chemistry thing that took about 10 years to develop. And it's like, have you ever used duct tape yeah. and you've left it stuck to something for like a year and you pull it up and you get this sticky gooey stuff? Well, that's happened to the analog tapes. So you, you've lost recordings now? No, actually, they can be restored, but it's, it, it's a process that's kind of a pain in the ass <laughs> to do. You know, it takes a couple of days to get to play back. And once it does play back, it's, it's a little dark. It's not as bright and, and sparkly as I remember it was when I recorded it 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> were your ears better then? <laughs> actually, they were. They were. So I'm sure it's not my hearing, you know. This guy's <laughs> so what other kinds of equipment do you have? So you have an Optron computer, an AMD computer in here with a bunch of hard drives? Well, yeah, this rack just sort of collects. And we have another system down here uh, by merging technologies called Pyramix, which is a Swiss company that's also on a PC-based computer. And uh, it has a 800 gigabyte fiber array, RAID array. Yeah, wow. which is pretty cool. I love fiber. I want it's that. fast. <laughs> yeah, we love fiber too. We were in a data center and got a look at fiber coming off the internet. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, cool. These guys put things together for NASA. They, you know, NASA has a console like ours and, and, and this thing. And these guys also do some video to. Uh, they do a, more video than they do audio. To, do you just dump music down to your iPod and take it home? No, I, 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 I just. You know, I'm I'm kind of like with you know for the live players. I'd rather go out and hear something live, yeah. and to walk around with it. The first time I tried <laughs> putting earplugs in and listening to my Nano, I almost had a car wreck. You know, <laughs> I, I can't do this. You know, I'm not. You know, if I had maybe learned to do that in my 20s, I could do it today. You sort of like you know, riding a horse and talking on a cell phone. I can't do it. <laughs> well, I, I can see why. I, it, people at home can't hear this, but the music that you get to listen to even record it because you have all the tracks and you have great sound equipment. Yeah, if there's not enough banjo, I can add more banjo. <laughs> it, it sounds so great. So thanks for or giving take us... take it out, whichever is the case. <laughs>